shit. <laughs> oh man. Oh, this is a lot of people. Oh, there was no one here when I was practicing earlier, but now there's like beings in the audience. All right. Um, so my name is Jakar J. Smith. Uh, some of you guys might know me as Sailor J on YouTube. <laughs> um, uh, I recently just turned uh, 23, and a lot of people probably refer to me as like a content creator type person, so I guess it's what you would call me. Um, and yeah, now I guess I'm an actress, so that's a thing. Um, so when Andy first called me, he was I was supposed to come last year and then I couldn't because of scheduling conflicts. And uh, this year he was like, uh, we still really want you to come. And a lot of people just sort of want to know what the hell happened, like how, <laughs> like how did this happen? And uh, it was hard trying to figure out how I was going to explain it because I've been like super depressed for the past month. So I was like, man, what the fuck? I was like, I gotta, I was like, I'm going to go and like spread my misery. <laughs> like everyone's going to hate it. I still don't know how I got here. So um, I'm going to try to explain it as best I can, and I'm gonna to try to be as honest as I can. Uh, and I know that that's not always easy, especially when we have this job, but I feel like speaking to other content creators and, and other people that are part of this uh, is really, really important because that's really the only way, in my opinion, to negate all the things that do go on behind the scenes that are really, really hard to deal with, especially when you feel like you're alone. So I grew up in uh, North St. Louis, and when I was 18, I was like, I have to get the fuck out of here, but I'm like financially anxious, like I'm so scared of student debt. I was like, what can I do? Uh, I joined the military. I didn't know a lot about the military at the time. <laughs> so that was a thing. But I, I did, I was like, get me out of here as fast as possible. And about two weeks before uh, I ship out, uh, it was announced that Darren Wilson would not be held accountable for the shooting of Mike Brown. So to kind of explain my proximity to this, I did not know him personally, but my aunt lives on the street on which this boy was shot, and he was 17 years old. And they left his body in the sun for so long that they have just paved over this section in the street because the blood would not come out of the pavement. Uh, this young man was shot six times, and uh, there's still very conflicting stories from the Ferguson police versus eyewitnesses uh, based around what happened. But if you are familiar at all with the Black Lives Matter movement, this is, for me, at least where it originated. And this was, for me, my first brush, I think, in extremes with politics. Now, my family is black. Uh, I'm extremely racially ambiguous, so I don't have to deal with uh, half of the things that darker skinned people with type 4 hair do that are very identifiably black. But watching the things unfold in person versus what was being told on the news was sort of earth shattering. I saw women pulled out of wheelchairs, pregnant women thrown on the ground, people pepper sprayed uh, with, with no warning, no kind, of, no kind of foregoing of get back on the sidewalk, get back here, get back wherever. Uh, I remember we're standing across from the Ferguson Police Department and uh, the National Guard is standing in front of us, and I'm shipping out for the Air Force in two weeks, and I just started bawling because I was like, what, what am I doing? Like, what am I about to do? Is this what I'm about to do? Is this who I'm about to be? And I knew before I even left for the military that the military was not gonna last for me because I, I, couldn't, I couldn't ever imagine doing that. Or, uh, or standing across from my own people while the Grand Wizard of the KKK was personally escorted into the police department in front of this line of protesters. So it was, it was insane. But uh, I did want to bring it up because I did mention that racial ambiguity. And I do think that that was part of the reason I was able to probably navigate uh, the online spectrum as easily as I did. And that's not to say that I don't deal with racism on a regular basis, because I do. But uh, it does say a lot about the way that we as content creators uh, don't always look out for darker skinned women. Uh, we don't always look out for trans individuals. We don't always look out for non-binary people, because a lot of times when they get caught up in this, they get caught up in themselves and not about what's being said. And that's a lot about what I want to talk don't about. Blend in that neck. So, <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that was my first introduction to the world, and I didn't think anybody would see it, so now it's like fucking horrifying when people are like, oh my god, I recognize you. I'm like, please, please, <laughs> you're mistaken. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> um, 
um, I'm like, I've never seen that bitch in my life. I, <laughs> so, um, so I'm like sick home one day and my sister had just started middle school and she's into like the peacock eyeshadow phase and shit that we all went through and I'm not a hater. So I'm like, you look great. I'm like, do your thing, like you got this. Uh, but she's sort of experiencing at that time the whole boys understanding girls are starting to wear makeup and a lot of like their unasked for opinions. She came home one day and she was like, crying and like all her shit was all over her face and I was like damn dog what happened she was like she was like she liked this boy and he's like I don't like girls that wear makeup and it just I mean like shattered her whole her whole world and it was it was messed up to me because I'm not saying that young boys don't go through an allotment of of harassment and bullying while they're in middle school but I do think it's very easy to say that women experience it on a far higher scale um, so I wanted to make her laugh. I was stationed in Florida, so I couldn't be there all the time. So I make this stupid video. I send it to her. She thinks it's funny. I post it on Facebook. Just, I don't know what I was smoking, but, <laughs> but I did. And I didn't think anybody was going to watch it. So I just leave it. And then the next day I get back from work and it had like over 500,000 views. And I was like, no, no, no. I was like, whoa. I was like, I was like, oh, fuck. I was like, no. I was like, oh, my God. I was like, people are going to know that I'm weird. Like, what is happening? I was like, so then I, I start getting a lot of good messages, though. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, my God, I was so depressed. Like, this made me laugh my ass off, like, yada, yada. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, like, people are kind of listening. And a lot of the messages I were getting were like, yeah, like, no one ever, like, in the beauty community kind of talks about this kind of thing. And I didn't really think I had said much of anything. But, but I was like, well, if they're listening. So I, like, put on, like, my dumb bitch hat and decided I was going to make more. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> so, um... Uh, so yeah, so I start posting these things on Facebook and they just, I mean, viral after viral after viral. And I was like kind of astounded because it did not make sense to me. And then when I thought about it, it made a lot of sense because uh, especially for women who go on YouTube, there's sort of like this idea that you can only be a makeup artist or a makeup person or whatever. But even in the beauty community, there's like this pervasive amount of racism and uh, everybody is white and uh, everybody looks the same. And it's much, much harder for, say, a black, dark-skinned trans woman who, I mean, kills look after look after look to get the same amount of attention as, like, a white boy who puts on strip lashes. And so those are, like, the kind of things that I wanted to talk about because people were paying attention. So I wanted it to matter when they were paying attention. I started putting them on YouTube because I was like, I can make money and I'm poor. So it was really, really easy for me to kind of push people into the YouTube sphere. And I, again, I think that's one of the only reasons I got as many subscribers as quickly as I did, because I already had um, a couple hundred thousand people following me on Facebook. Um, with that being said, I would post things that didn't have shit to do with the videos. And I, that's kind of when I started getting the, oh, I followed this because I thought it was going to be a funny page comments. And I probably should have realized then what this was going to be, but I didn't. So I kept going. This is who the New York Times sent to my crib, and if any of you work for them, I want you to tell them I'm still salty about that article. So I get this email, and this lady is like, I do profiles for the New York Times. There's this one really, really good one that was in there. It's this girl that she was making a, a fashion line of hijabs, and she was talking about why she felt it, it was important and blah, blah. That's the article they sent me. So I'm thinking it's going to be about like, the political movements, like about feminism, about racism, about police brutality. Like I think that's what this article and this profile is going to be about. This bitch shows up to my crib. I let her in my house because I'm weak. <laughs> She starts telling me about like her sad childhood and I'm like, oh dog, yeah, we all been through it. I just start talking to talk. While we're talking, I'm specific. I'm like, I don't want my relationship mentioned. I don't really want to talk about this, this and that. Like, I don't want any of that in the article. This bitch is like, yes, I get it. I understand. And then puts all of it in the article. All of it. This goes from feminism and racism and the importance of using your platform to speak up for things that matter to sad brown child makes it out of the hood. I was so mad, I call this girl at work and I'm like sobbing. I'm like, why would you, I'm like, I don't want anybody to know any of this and people never believe me when I say that I didn't wanna be an influencer and I didn't want this much attention because I'm a super private person when I'm not like being funny. And, um, and she was just like, well, I knew, I knew. bitch, it's on site still. If I catch you in these streets, man, I'm still so mad. So this is me. 
deciding I'm not doing this shit no more. I was like, I'm not talking to nobody. I'm not speaking of anything. I was like, fuck y'all. I'm not saying shit. Y'all not getting anything out of me. What I wanted to do initially was not YouTube or acting. I wanted to write books. So I was like a huge book nerd when I was little. That was kind of like my only escape. She's clapping, she gets it. I was like my only escape. And I wanted to be an author. So before all of this shit had started, I was on literary Twitter just scouring and creeping and like watching, scrolling through hashtags. And I had saved like this list of agents that I wanted to query. And uh, within like about a month, Almost all of those people were following me on Twitter. So um, I had read a lot about the slush pile. And for those of you who don't know, it's like this mass amount of queries that agents get day in and day out of like people who want their books published. And I was super scared of mine getting lost in the slush pile, but I didn't want to use whatever I had garnered online to like weasel my way into a book deal. Like I wanted it to still be about the book I wanted to write and less about who I was online but like, how the fuck was I gonna do that without looking like an asshole? So um, I dropped this video called How to Get a Literary Agent. <laughs> uh, broke bitch rule number one, use what you got. So I drop it and in like an hour, they're in my DMs, we sort it out, we figure it out. And then this is a blank slide because I was like, oh, I have to write the book. <laughs> I was like, oh, people are gonna read it. All right, okay. So I start doing that. In the middle of me starting to do that, I was, I'm still in the military and I'm cross training, which is basically when you're like, I want a different job within the military. You have to like tack on two years to your service or something. So I was gonna do that because I was like, I don't know what the fuck else I'm gonna do. I don't know what the fuck. So I'm doing that and um, this is how Nosferatu slid into my DMs. Um, <laughs> Like three months after Contouring 101 had circulated on Facebook, uh, Tiffany Little Canfield reaches out to me and she's like, oh my God, yeah, yeah, can I have your information? I give it to her and I didn't think anything of it because I had gotten a lot of these. Uh, there are specific companies that cater to like people who want to be influencers, if that's what you're into, like if people who want to do YouTube, who want to collaborate and network and do stuff like that. I wasn't into that. And my advice to you is if you find yourself in that kind of situation is to really ask yourself if they can offer you something that you need or if they're offering you something that your insecurities will feed upon. Because um, I, I would ask these people, I was like, so what can you do? Like, what is, what is this? Like, what do you want? Because I'm giving you part of my money and I'm already poor. So I feel like it should be something I can't do for myself. And it would be weird shit. It'd be like, well, we can fix your thumbnails, like teach you how to make a nice thumbnail. I was like, I mean, I think my thumbnails are doing great. It's like 1.3 million views in a couple months. I mean, I'm, so. <laughs> And it would be like, we can teach you like what kind of hashtags to use so you get found and discovered. I'm like, I mean, my shit's pretty discoverable. I don't know about y'all, but. And it would be like, we can fix your header or like maybe we can work on like the accent. So I talk like a white lady online because no, like a lot of white people can't understand what I'm saying like in person. I still meet people today, like, and they hear me speak and they're like, because it's not like, hello. Like, <laughs> I don't know why anyone would think that that was an actual accent, because I, I did my best, like... <laughs> but they're like, oh, okay, so she's not British. I'm like, I thought I made that clear, man. Like, I... whatever. They're like, we could, like, work on, like, the accent for, like, media training and, like, the header. At the time, my header was Sailor Moon with, like, a bunch of crips in the background. I was like... <laughs> I mean, everybody that I fuck with gets it. Like, everybody else is fucking with it, so I think I'm good. So um, just be aware of those things, though, because I found myself asking, like, do I need this? Like, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? I don't even want to be an influencer, and I know that. But because people are telling me that this is what I need, now I'm second-guessing myself because I have no idea how to navigate this space. I still have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Even coming here, I was like, what am I gonna wear? Do I have to, do I dance? Do I, the, the PowerPoint, is it graded? Like, I was, I was stressed, dog. I was so stressed and I've been like depressed again for like the past month. So I was like, just gonna show up and spread some fucking misery. I was like, it's gonna be, it's gonna be terrible. But it, it hasn't been terrible. And it isn't terrible right now. And like even seeing you guys makes me feel so much better. Seeing everyone just makes me feel a lot better. 
All right, so Tiffany reaches out. She's like, Jamie, the showrunner, caught one of your videos on Facebook while she was writing the scripts for Nosferatu, and she couldn't get it out of her head. So have you acted, blah, blah, No. So she sends me a sheet, basically, of how audition tapes are supposed to look or something. Um, I don't fucking know. There's rules, I guess. So, so I was like, all right. So I like, I sort of just did it how I would do one of my YouTube videos. I made it with one of my friends who also cannot act. So it was just, it was a mess, but it was great. And, um, and I'm not saying that I'm psychic, but someone pointed this out to me on Twitter the other day. This is one of the first videos I uploaded. It's always been my only dream to travel to Hollywood where a withered old man in an ugly ass suit will harass me on a regular basis. <laughs> <laughs> so at the time, it was supposed to be um, sort of like a reference to the Me Too movement, but Nosferatu is entirely about getting harassed by an old white nigga in a suit. And <laughs> I'm not saying I'm psychic, but I'm fucking psychic. Um, the, the power of manifestation and the importance on your, your mental and emotional health in order to build the life that you want for yourself seems to be like a huge thing on Twitter right now. Astrology is a huge thing right now. Tarot is becoming so much more mainstream right now. And I feel like our generation specifically, because we have built these safe spaces for ourselves online, can find it in us to bring more of the focus on that mental and emotional health and how it plays into how you are able to navigate your life or how you are able to attain the life for yourself. Because it doesn't always just show up. You have to have that balance. And I don't feel like a lot of us have that balance right now. Not specifically us in the crowd, I just mean us in this industry in general. Because now I talk to people and I'm like, I'm sad. I don't want to do this shit anymore. And they're like, but you're an actress. Like, this is the dream, this is the blah, you have Twitter followers, you have subscribers, you have X, Y, Z. And people assume that it's supposed to fulfill us, right? It's supposed to fix everything else in our lives because we've reached like this unreal idea of, of what life is supposed to be online and that's not the case. Um, when platforms like Twitter and YouTube, though, uh, allow those safe spaces to be perpetrated, specifically by Nazis, and um, in, in more direct terms, when women of color speak out on platforms like YouTube and Twitter, and those platforms do nothing to protect those individuals who are already marginalized, it becomes a huge problem. I'll say it again. <laughs> There is no accountability being taken for that bullshit. And it's why you have white boys going to Japan and filming dead bodies and getting away with it. And it is why you have little kids who are idolizing these influencers and have no fucking idea what goes into being an actual influencer. Because the difference between influencer and celebrity, I think, and why we get so confused is because we don't see Beyonce do shit. She minds her business, okay? She eats her food. She raises her kids and she drops an album like at midnight so like the rest of us can wake up and feel like a modicum of inspiration. Influencers post almost every day. You know everything about their life and it starts to seem like the messier they are and the more they're gonna let you leech off whatever physical, mental, emotional, whatever thing that they're going through, the more attraction there is. The better you can make me feel about my life, the more I wanna hear from you. But those influencers have no idea what to do with any of that power. Half of us are under like 25, 30, so none of us are smart. I'm just gonna shit, I'm just gonna throw that out there now. And you have to ask who's guiding these people through that type of thing. I have zero guidance. I don't have parents. I had no agents when they reached out for me to do Nosferatu. I have no network ties, I have no family that's in the business, I, the only friends I have in the business I made after I got Nosferatu, so I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm grateful that I have an inkling of, of maturity about me because of how I grew up, and so I'm able to see things sometimes from what for what they are. But even when I don't, and I'm corrected, there is a plethora of my followers who are willing to die on my hill even if I'm wrong, why is that okay? I make you laugh and I make you feel good about yourself and now I'm allowed to get away with anything? It makes no sense. 
And no one should be granted that kind of power. That's how we end up with Logan Pauls. That's how we end up with people who make a complete ass of themselves. No one is checking them. And because no one is checking them, they're influencing an entire generation following that's going to grow up and think that all of this is OK. So yeah, um, I started to experience a lot of the possessiveness that comes with influencer culture. You're not posting anymore. You're not talking about XYZ. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. I am not a mouthpiece. Everybody who likes what I have to say has all the power in them to say exactly what the fuck I've said. And that was the point is you don't have to be white, and you don't necessarily have to be super pretty, and you don't have to have a million and one followers. Say it. You have it in you to say it. And when we rely on individuals to speak for us because they take the backlash and we don't have to, again, the relationship starts to get extremely toxic. Uh, I, I left YouTube because the more that I was speaking to the people that were watching my videos, the more I realized that I was making them laugh, I was making them feel good, but I was not doing anything to help their position on YouTube. Trans people are still frequently shadow banned. For what? Out of all the dumb shit that I have said on YouTube, almost none of it is going to help a small child that thinks they might be trans. For a lot of kids, that's their only source of information. What is transitioning? What is being trans? What is it like? What, what are your experiences? Well, people put that out there to help educate other people every day. And every day it's shadow banned. But we have Nazis running rampant on Twitter, on YouTube. We have those weird toy review pedo channels. I don't know what the fuck was going on with that. It's a mess. And we're leaving it up to an algorithm to fix it. No one wants to take responsibility for it because it's a fucking cash cow. And I don't want anything to do with it. So I leave YouTube, right? And don't, do not, don't, don't, don't you dare. Do not applaud me for doing something that we all know is the right thing to do. Do not. I appreciate it. I do. And I'm, I'm so prone to being like, yes, praise me. It makes me feel good. But, but I know better, and we know better. So I leave YouTube. And I start getting comments like, AKA, I'm famous now, so fuck you guys. I'm like, I'm still poor, what do you mean? I'm like, I, I, I feel like in this sphere, even when you do try to do something right, it could be something completely wrong. Or when you do think that you're doing the right thing, there's always gonna be somebody that's pissed off about it. And if you don't have a very strong conviction about what you know is right and wrong, you're fucked. Because everybody in the comments section is gonna dictate what you do. So yeah. Stream this so I can afford to live. It came out yesterday. Uh, a lot of people want to know like what I'm doing now. So I'm, I guess I'm acting now. I got a second job outside of Nosferatu. So I was like, I guess this is what we're doing. So we're just kind of like rolling with it. Here's the trailer. You make me a promise this weekend. It's really important to me. This is not an easy path to walk and many have stumbled along the way. We will not let you fall. Now, Sunday is Daughter's Day. Now, this is Shay's first time. Don't worry. Shay, you have so much potential. What's that about? You were with a boy. What were you thinking? We just need you to come with us. We all just want our dads to love us. This is not love. Some people out there say that we try to control our women. We love our women. So that's on Hulu. I was switching birth control so my skin is a wreck. Cut me some slack. I was stressed. <laughs> but stream that so I can afford to live. Um, OK, so yeah, I just turned 23. And um, I'm sort of now embracing what it means to uh, be a possession of, of online culture instead of my own individual. Uh, this is how the world first was introduced to me on the left. I use this picture on the right because my legs look great. And I wanted to show off my tattoo to everybody here. Um, but there's, there's no difference between these two individuals on the screen. I would know. <laughs> and yet, the very same women that I champion are always the first ones under my Instagram posts to tell me that I'm not smart anymore. I miss when you were smart. 
I miss when you were funny. And it doesn't mean I'm not smart and it doesn't mean I'm not funny anymore. It translates into basically, I'm upset that you don't tap dance for me on YouTube anymore. That's exactly what it means. And nobody has the balls to say it. So instead, they attack what they think I've built this on. Um, there's something that, that happens when we attach ourselves to someone who produces art. Musicians, influencers, writers, actors, whatever. That as soon as they venture into something else, they're no longer giving us what we thought that we deserved from them. And so there's no room for evolution. That's very, very hard to grapple with, especially when you're trying to figure out how to be a woman, what the fuck that even means. And again, I have no guidance. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I get lucky if like a black woman posts like a life thread on Twitter and I'm like, we are screenshotting this shit. Like, that is like the best I can hope for right now because therapy is expensive. But what can we do about that? Besides holding ourselves and each other accountable for the things that we say, for the things that we expect out of our creators, Right now, I'm gonna do what I wanna do because that's exactly how this started and that's exactly how I got here. And if you take anything from this, I hope it's that you should do whatever the fuck you wanna do. If they tell you that girls on YouTube only belong on the makeup channel, well, they put my ass on the trending page under makeup and some poor child who wanted to learn how to contour <laughs> <laughs> was met with that shit instead. But look at where we are now. Make whatever it is you want to make. Even if people think it's stupid, even if you think it's stupid sometimes, if you feel it, I mean really feel that shit in your chest, put it out there, and the people will come because they're there. And even if it's something that nobody else is doing, even if it's something that people are going to make fun of you for, do it! <laughs> do it! Because right now, I see a lot of people, a lot of people come up to me and they're like, hey, I parodied your video, or hey, I parodied this, or and it's my stuff, and it's, it's so sweet, because I'm like, holy shit, I'm honored. But at the same time, I'm like, I wanna see what you wanna make. We're on the same fucking wavelength already. If you think my weird ass is a roller coaster, let's do this, like, what are we doing? What are we making next? It's really easy to feel like you're alone in this, um, and I do, frequently especially because I didn't come into this traditionally, especially because I didn't come into acting. Traditionally, there's a lot of self-comparison that goes on between me and whoever I think is doing a better job. Um, but festivals like this are super, super important. Because at the end of the day, we are not alone. Nothing exists in isolation. And that includes us. And that includes creators. So thank you for coming. I hope that all of you all of you, I mean, really go for whatever content it is you feel like you need to put out there, because I guarantee you somebody needs it a lot more than they need the shit that I did. <laughs> so I'm excited to see it. Thank you all for coming, and I appreciate your time. <laughs>